really the basis of every application in the world is creating data uh, and connecting to other microservices or other app software applications. Um, and so we really are, are pushing the needle to evolve Constellation Story to be that ecosystem that developers can uh, build applications on top of a robust infrastructure. And Lattice is uh, one of our first uh, marquee uh, um, projects and companies uh, that's built in the cryptocurrency space around decentralized finance. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, raised about $3 million in the course of a couple weeks. Um, so there is a, there's a huge appetite around um, our, our protocol. Love it. Uh, yeah, and so I'm not going to go too deep into this slide. I just, I'm really excited because we're about to launch this new standard around the connected mobility data marketplace, which what I love about it is it hits that sweet spot that, that Constellation's focused on, which is really that interoperability and that ecosystem play. Um, and this has been very eye-opening. I'm going to be very, very candid in saying that I don't have like a rich background of, of mobility experience, such as some of the other constituents on the working group. However, I was able to bring forth uh, the constellation opinion and how distributed ledger technology can really make an impact in a lot of these. And we're finally coming to a close on this thing. So my understanding is it will be published here in, in Q4. Um, we're just now going through the editing of the, the standards. So um, everybody should get really excited about this one because this one affects all of us in a very meaningful way. And while we were going through the uh, ecosystem play of like, which was really lengthy. And what I mean by that is um, everybody in the working group had to really suss out every single sensor we could think of in the car, but also in the infrastructure, you know, are there uh, parking lots that may have them, you know, our cell phone towers, how are all these things playing a role in uh, the interoperability of data to create a true autonomous network. And then to take a step lower is what is that kind of data marketplace or data exchange look like? And out of all the sensors, we had to kind of divide and conquer and we had to pick and, and Constellation took on things like GPS and, and a few others. But the one that we got the most excited about was LIDAR. And, and the reason why is because everybody was kind of scratching their head on how to deal with LIDAR data. And LIDARs, for those that don't know, is really kind of the, um, the, the North Star, if you will, of, of true situational awareness. If you are able to combine LIDAR data with camera data and a GPS sensor, you really do have true situational awareness. That said, the two drawbacks are is LIDAR is not necessarily cheap. It's getting much cheaper, but for a really powerful LIDAR sensor, it's, it sometimes is unapproachable um, from a cost perspective but also it creates just a ton of data. I mean, we've seen this Intel graphic that's been passed around probably for a couple of years now that AVs or autonomous vehicles will create upwards of 4,000 terabytes of data every 24 hours. I mean, just storing that alone is, is a problem, let alone how do you move some of that data up to the cloud? How do you process it? How do you make sense of it? And then how do you interoperate it with other data sets to go back to that situational awareness uh, statement? The reason I'm showing this slide is just that it, we, we really are excited about LIDAR and playing a role in it because uh, we see that not only affects self-driving cars, but it also plays a major role in our space ISAC approach around space monitoring and discovery, as well as aircraft surveillance um, with the U.S. Air Force. And as, uh, as mentioned earlier in the call, it's kind of a hot button right now because Apple is announcing that their you know, iPhone 12 is going to have LIDAR capability. And a lot of folks, it's kind of be the introductory concept to what LIDAR can do. Um, so when, when we think about LIDAR, um, it really comes down to two major things. Um, how do we make sure that the data is really small in such a way that blockchain is used only to reference things? And then also how do we create end-to-end -end security? Um, and so the, the hint in all of this is that you don't store all of your data on the chain in general. This is bad practice. I mean, it's something that we constantly are talking about within the Mobi Consortium is that just don't put all the data on the blockchain. And that was one of the exciting things about the sensor um, effort with this marketplace uh, working group was we really had to go through the schemas and figure out what does need to go on the blockchain and what doesn't. Because as you guys all know, putting everything on the blockchain is uh, unnecessary. So in this case, there'll be use cases where an individual want to use some, sort, some type of aggregated authentication pipeline in order to create some kind of association that the data exists and has some level of physical accuracy. 
So if there's like, say, a security camera that you want to stream and store the footage and ensure that data has not been tampered or altered with some sort of hash on the chain itself and stream a lot of information and use an ordinary zip with some sort of simple compression just to put little motifs or each still in chunks of stills on the chain itself. So if someone is reviewing it later, they can reference the chain and make sure that the thing that they're seeing is actually valid. So again, you don't store all the data on the chain itself. It's bad practice. What one will want to do is use compression as your friend in all of these situations and use compressed representations of your original data on the chain itself, but also in aggregated form. And this is how you'll get around actually storing things within this convoluted data set in such a way that it makes sense parsing it later. So data packets of compressed information can be sent around in real time all the time. And these cars will have a sub process where they are sending a bulk of their data if they want somewhere to the cloud as a slower process. The only time you want to send an alert with a bigger packet is in a situation where I say like a bunch of cars all saw some sort of a car accident or something and it would kick off a faster response. Sort of like Bluetooth. It's like that, that small. And in terms of guaranteeing that your information is actually correct or not, you basically have to use some kind of proof of authority, which isn't a bad use for hardware. What you can do is use an ASIC chip to create a fingerprint on the hardware itself so that in certain ways, if this thing has been air gapped or tampered with, uh, it breaks. It's like almost like a seal. It'll pop and then the fingerprint won't work anymore, which is a common approach that could be used for physical devices. We wouldn't rely on ordinary key-based authentication for situations where we are curious around sense, a sensor sending data to a pipeline. And Digging, a, a, just to make this a little bit more practical, um, this is a very basic kind of flow chart, if you will. And, and all those sensor like outputs that you see at the bottom there, um, that's, that's just for posterity's sake. That just shows you the level of granularity that we went through, um, through this working standard to show like how we sussed out every single bit of, of potential data that could exist with each of these sensors. So in this use case, just to walk you through to show you kind of the basics of how it breaks out, and we had to talk about this in this sense to really kind of nail this, is a vehicle's manufactured various sensors that are created, uh, create large frame data, like LiDAR, image, or video, and the vehicle is then sold to a given driver. So we have to talk about the buying process so we know the origin of where the car comes from. When the vehicle is driven, these images sensors detect that an event occurs, right? And that would be recorded in the moment. Um, and it submits that to a CPU and a node. The vehicle CPU node produces and validates metadata for data integrity, creating an immutable digital twin for proof of integrity while compressing and storing large files on a server and submits the metadata to an embedded server. The network checks cross-references the server file metadata with the digital twin metadata to validate integrity or access control and either allows or rejects the data request from outside actors. And then at the end of it, of course, authorized entity, entities read the event information from an ingesting perspective. So um, to this point, uh, we have a lot of really great materials that go into more depth. I think we could probably rat hole on the um, low level nitty gritty of LIDAR for hours on one of these calls, but wanted to give a high level. Um, we did write a, a pretty comprehensive research paper with Schaeffler. Um, Moby also helped co-author it um, that talks about why data exchanges fail in the B2B environment. We repurposed a lot of this material that we brought over to the business section of the working standard. Um, we also have some technical overview papers on there, or a technical overview paper on there, as well as an application demo that really shows us streaming GPS data into a device and uh, appending it to our ledger from a notarization perspective, showing that it can be audited in any, at any given time. Um, so you can find those uh, available at constellationnetwork.io backslash solutions backslash mobility or just go to the website and I'm sure you'll find it. So uh, Ben, maybe you can take us home here on what we've heard. <clears throat> yeah, really quick, just to kind of recap, um, you know, what Constellation is building is, is an ecosystem that developers can build Web 3.0 uh, applications. So we really see ourselves as the bridge between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 by adding uh, more robustness to data creation um, with auditability and accountability. Uh, we've built a uh, our one of the largest decentralized networks that we call a zero trust network that's uh, currently about 45 nodes uh, processing millions of dollars every day. Uh, and we have a really strong <coughs> community that 
we've used for uh, hiring. Uh, we've met uh, the, our, our next great developers that we've brought in um, by seeing how they interact within the community. Uh, and they help evolve our use cases and bring new opportunities to us while evangelizing us. Um, and our business model on, on the private side, what we've focused on is around license-based uh, modeling or uh, royalty-based revenue that's all built around the product around programmatic compliance. So uh, taking everything that we said today and bundling it up very simply with uh, compliance around your data.